this is this will be interesting trying to film an animation of an animation. Okay. All right. So we're going to start on page five of forty. And we're going to be opening up the plunger assembly. Mm -hmm. should have this file open. Does everybody have this open? Yeah. Is there anybody who does not have it open needs help locating it? Okay, so we're going to be creating our first animation using this assembly. Notice if you put your um, left mouse over the handle, you can you can move it or you should be able to move it see that so you should be able to just drag this in and out like that yeah see that yeah well it can go like like that yeah yeah it will defy the laws of physics definitely okay Okay, so everybody, so I think Love was having problems. Okay, okay. did Elior show up? No, okay. All right, so now we're going to enter the fabulous world of animation. And one of the things that um, we're going to be using this tutorial by Marlon Banta. Marlon's also an awesome instructor at SolidWorks World. Um, he does this presentation every year at SolidWorks World. He's kind of legendary for it. Um, it's a really good presentation, um, and I like and I like the way he's done it. So, one of the things he talks about is in an animation, it's a really good idea to kind of have a script, okay, to try and figure out exactly what you and it's just like a script for any movie. You say at the five second mark. You want this to happen at the 10 second mark. You want this to happen, you know. So you kind of figure out what your timing is and what you want to happen for your for your quote unquote play or movie or whatever you want to call it. So the environment for creating animations is actually built into SolidWorks. And if you look down here, right next to the model tab, there's a tab that says motion study. Do you see that? Yes. So you click on that tab and that will get you into the SolidWorks animation environment. So you click on it and all of a sudden we are in a brave new world, people. <laughs> <laughs> we are now like Alice in Wonderland. We have engaged into the looking glass. We have fallen through the looking glass. We are on the other side and we are ready to explore movie magic, all right, inside of SolidWorks, and this is built into SolidWorks. It's not an extra add-in. It's in the software that you got, so it's really cool that you have this available to you, all right? So you'll notice some things. I'm just going to kind of walk you through the interface a little bit before we start getting started. So you'll notice that up here we have our model and our graphics window like we normally have. Hey, Miles. Thank you for joining us. Okay, you'll notice that your ribbon's up here, but we're pretty much going to be ignoring the ribbon. 
right? Because we don't really need, aren't really going to be using it. Um, the old browser is still there, but we have a new browser down here. Do you see that? And the parts in both the upper and the lower are the same. Okay, so it's a one-to-one. -one. So if it says base plunger down here, it says base plunger up here. But you notice we've got some new stuff. We've got lights, camera, and scene, and we also have orientation and camera views. Do you see that? And also, if you expand underneath the parts here, notice they have little categories. So on each part, it has a move, explode, and appearance. Do you see that? So what, these are the things that you can do in your animation. You can move it, you can explode it, or you can change how it looks. All right, and you'll notice there are little keys right here. See the little diamonds? These are keys. And there's a little timeline up here. See, it starts at zero seconds and it goes all the way to 14 seconds by default. You can get more time if you need more time. It'll automatically add time if you go over. So it'll adjust for you. All right, um, so you can s say something happens at any of these second periods. So it's starting the movie at time zero and then it goes forward in time. Does that make sense? All right, and then up here, there's different tools. Um, you can't really see them right now because we don't, they're grayed out because we don't have any action scripted yet. But you'll notice there's a little calculator here. There's a fast forward button. There's a play button and there's a stop button. See that? So um, in the, it's pretty easy to know what the play button and the stop button do. Where's the record button? Um, it's gonna be over here um, when you when you when you create it. We haven't got there yet, but we'll get there. Don't worry. See right here where there's a little save symbol that saves the animation and it saves it to an AVI or a WMV. We'll get there. Don't worry. We will. I promise. Yeah, it's kind of like goes under the same theory as those flip books that you made when you were a little kid with a bouncy ball or the, you know. It's like claymation. Yeah, kind of like, yeah, like clay, exactly. It's like claymation. All right, so. Um, so we're going to be at zero seconds. So at zero seconds, you want to position your, your plunger like that. That's going to be the zero second mark. Do you see that? Oops. So I want to be on zero seconds. Uh, I want to delete this one. Okay. So you want to have your mouse at zero seconds. So notice I've got this gray line here. Do you see that? So what I did was I left clicked here at zero seconds and then I moved it into the position I want it to be at, at zero seconds. So that's like my starting point, okay? Okay, so now I want you to put your mouse at the five seconds and left click. And notice now you have a gray bar at five seconds. Do you see that? Is everybody able to get a gray bar at five seconds? And then at five seconds, what I want you to do is I want you to move your arm all the way, all the way like this, okay? And notice what happened is you got a new key right here on the arm. Do you see that? That should be okay. Okay, so now let's see what that would look like. So. First, we're going to calculate it. We're going to let SolidWorks do some qu some quick calculations. And what the calculation involves is it basically is interpolating all the frames between point A and point B. So we click on that calculator, and those are the yellow lines. Okay, and then play from start. Oh, okay. Okay, is that cool? Can I right click and just delete that extra diamond? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. All right. Everybody good? 
Okay, so what if we wanted to, it to go start down here, come down here, come back to where it started? Well, we could, you know, move it or we could copy and paste it. That way it's going to go back exactly to the original position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my mouse right here over the key where we first placed it and I'm going to right click and I'm going to copy it. Do you see that? Yeah. And then I'm going to come over to the 10 second. I'm going to left click on 10 seconds so that I see that gray bar. See the gray bar? And then I'm going to right click and go paste. And you see it adds a bunch of yellow lines. Okay, everybody ready? Now calculate. Does that look cool? Too easy. Too easy? No way! No way! What, you thought it was going to be hard? Oh no! The moon, each, each time you place a key, you're either changing appearance or moving, you're making some kind of change. So all those keys, they're just waiting to be used? Um, pre, they're not, well, that's one way to think about it. They're just kind of, yeah, they're, they're like the starting point. They're like the starting point. So multiple keys will have. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So now... Now you guys are going to be creating an animation for your final project. And most of you saw this animation, and most, I think most of you are pretty happy with it, how it turned out so far. So what I recommend to you is if you're happy with your animation, and you're at a point where you're feeling pretty good about it, <laughs> well, stop is kind of like, well, okay, because what happens when you get in trouble is you're at the happy point, and then you start tweaking, right? Mm -hmm and you mess it up. Invariably you mess it up. It just happens that way. So if you're at a point where you're fairly happy, control yourself from doing any more tweaks. What you can do is you can copy the animation, paste a new one, and then tweak the copy. That way, does that make sense? That way you're not going to mess up the animation that you're happy with and really start kicking yourself. Does, does that make sense? Yeah. So I'm going to put my mouse over this motion study tab and I'm going to right click and see where it says duplicate. Yeah. Click on duplicate. So now we have a motion study that's basically a complete copy of the one we just did. And if you don't believe me, you can just play it from the start and, and, and see that it does what the other one did. Put your mouse over the motion study tab, right click, duplicate, and then you've got a new motion study. And notice, notice that you have motion study one and motion study two. Yes. Okay? So, and if you wanted to, you could name your motions, your, your movies. So you could say first try, second try, you know, open, close, whatever makes sense to you. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add some changes to our script. Okay, so I want you to look on page 13 of the handout. And you'll notice that Marlon has written a script. Okay, if you look on page 13. And so when you're doing your script, you want to do something kind of like what Marlon's done. Notice he says, number one, both arms are visible until five seconds, and then at 10 seconds, they're going to be completely hidden. Base is going to transition from the current color, and then at five seconds, it's going to turn blue. The plunger is going to be shaded until five seconds, and then from 5 seconds to 10 seconds, it's going to transition to wireframe. You see the script? Does that make sense to you? So he's kind of giving you, this is what's going to start it happen at this time, and this is what's going to happen at that time. So that's the kind of script you want to do. Um, so let's look at the, the first one, where, we, where we're going to change, we're going to 
have, bo have both arms visible until five seconds and then be completely hidden. What are the arms doing? The arms are these two guys right here. Okay. okay? All right, so let's expand the left arm and the right arm. So if you see, if they're toward the bottom. See the, um, the left arm and the right arm right down here? Yes. Okay, everybody got them located in the browser? Is anybody lost needing help? Ryan's done this so many times he could do it in his sleep, I think. <laughs> he could help you, he really could. He's like sitting there waiting for somebody to need assistance. Okay? Everybody got, everybody located? Yeah. And notice that you have a thing right here that says appearance and a thing right here that says appearance. Okay, and you'll notice that there is a corresponding key point right here and a corresponding key point right there. Well, we want the appearance to be the same between zero and five seconds. So, how we can do that is we can take the key point, right click, copy it, go over to the five second mark, right click and paste it. Right? And, and copy it and then come over to five seconds and paste it, right? Was everybody able to copy their appearance from the zero to the five second? Is there anybody lost, confused? Do you understand what you just did? Appearance isn't changing between zero and five seconds. Ready? Yes. Well, it's good to like redo it after you're done with whatever it is you're doing. We're not quite there yet, okay? All right, so now we're gonna come over to the 10 second. I'm just gonna click on the 10 second and you should see this gray bar at the 10 second mark. You got that? Okay, and then what I want you to do is I want you to locate the left arm in your browser, right click and say hide. Okay, and then I want you to do the exact same thing with the right arm. And you'll notice you'll see a little pink bar. You see the pink bar? Mm -hmm. Okay, so for where the appearance... Cursor, it's kind of, it's kind of a, kind of yeah, yeah, uh-huh. Where the, the Wherever that gray bar is, that's, the, that's what time you're at. Yeah, exactly, that's the action. Right? Okay. okay. <laughs> That's great. Great, great. Your first student has brought that up. That's a great metaphor. That's the action key, right? Where something's going to happen in your animation. All right? Now, why don't we calculate it? Put your mouse back to zero seconds. So you've got, got the gray bar at your zero seconds and hit calculate. Well, if you wanted to start from the beginning. Was that cool? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go back to page 13 and look at item 2 on the script. What was the second item that we wanted in our script? The base is going to transition from its current color at time 0 and then at the 5 second mark it's going to turn blue. Do you see that? Yeah. Okay, so let's put our cursor, our gray bar, back at five seconds. Can you put your gray bar back to five seconds? Everybody there? So, we need to locate the base. And remember, the base is right here. Okay? So, we want to change the color of the base to blue at the five second mark. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight appearance on the base. Right click and go to appearance. Do you see that? Yeah. Everybody there? Now if you don't like the color blue, be like Ron, be, be, be a rebel, pick a different color. All right, notice that if you scroll down on this side, here's where you pick the color blue. But if you wanna pick a different color, feel free, okay? 
And then you're going to select the green check up here. Okay, and notice you'll get that pink bar that indicates there is an appearance change between 0 and 5 seconds on that part. Was everybody able to see that? Was everybody able to do that? Did anybody need help? Is anybody lost? You no, you just have to click the color and then green check. Okay. All right. Put your gray bar back to the zero and press calculate. How do you like your movie so far? Is that cool? Alright, so now let's go back to the script on page 13, number, thir number 3, item number 3 in our script. Plunger is going to be shaded until 5 seconds and then transition to completely to wireframe at 10 seconds. Okay, so we're going to locate the plunger. Here's the plunger right here. Let's see, let's find our plunger. So there's the plunger right there. Can you locate the plunger in your browser down here? Locate it? Everybody find it? Okay. We're going to copy the appearance from the zero second over to the five second. Do you all remember how to do that? So I'm going to highlight this key. I'm going to go copy. And then I'm going to come over to five second, right click and go paste. Okay, so I copied the appearance because the appearance is going to change from zero to five seconds. We're only going to change it at the 10 second mark. Everybody good? Anybody lost? Jacob. When you, uh, when you click appearance, uh, does everything above it highlight? Mm -hmm. You left click? Oh, just hit escape. Oh, yeah. Just hit escape and that'll go away. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then you want to click on the 10 second mark? Okay. Your gray bar should be at the 10 second mark. Okay. Right click on the plunger under component display. See where it says component display? Change it to say wireframe. Got it? And notice you should see a pink bar for the plunger going from the 5 second mark to the 10 second mark. Everybody got it? Move your cursor back to the zero second mark, press calculate. For the wireframe, you're going to go to component display. Can you play a video again? Can you play a video again? Sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Cool? Okay, is there anybody lost needing help? Okay, now some of you at this point are probably feeling pretty happy. 
Okay, we're going to move on to our second animation for you on part three. And we're going to go to open the clutch assembly. So we're going to open our clutch assembly. So it's in the clutch folder. And it looks like this. And once again, we're going to go to motion study. It's called clutch assembly. And it's in the clutch folder, C-L-U-T-C-H. Everybody got it? Okay. Okay. So what's going to happen is some of you guys are going to be working on your final projects and we're going to get down to the wire and you're going to feel like you don't have time to create fabulous animations. <laughs> Bingo, you're one of those. It's good to own it. You know, own, own it early, be aware. Okay, so th for those of you, so for those of you who are procrastinators, wait until the last minute, um, are more concerned with getting your design done than creating a fabulous animation for the design, this section of the lecture is for you. Okay? <laughs> All right, in order for this section of the lecture to work, you have to have created an exploded view in your assembly. As long as you've created an exploded view, you are golden. If you haven't created an exploded view, you are not so golden. Okay, so SolidWorks comes with a tool for procrastinators called the Animation Wizard. It looks like a little camera with a magic wand on it. Do you see? Can you all locate the little camera with a magic wand on the toolbar? Everybody see that? What's cool about this is that you can create an animation using the Animation Wizard and somebody will think that you spent hours and hours creating your animation even though the wizard has done all the work. Okay? So are you ready to have the wizard save your ass? <laughs> okay, so we're going to click on the animation wizard. Okay, and notice that one of your choices is to rotate the model. So you can have it do like a showroom spin on a stage. So you can admire your animation. So you're going to click on rotate the model. And then you're going to say next. And then you can pick the axis of rotation. We can go the X, Y, or Z. I'm going to pick the Z, Z axis. Notice I've got my X, Y, and Z here, so it shows me what it is. I can pick whether it's going to go clockwise, counterclockwise, and the number of rotations. I'm going to say I want it to spin around like five times. OK? Ready? Okay, then I'm going to go next, and then it asks me how long do I want it to go. So if I, it's going around five times, that's two seconds per, if it's going ten seconds, then it's two seconds. You don't want to go too fast because that'll be, it'll be, you, you, you get motion sickness. Lots, some, oh, I should have like had a, had a warning label at the beginning of this lecture. Some people will get motion sickness during this lecture. <laughs> okay, just so you know. And notice you can say when that start time is going to be. You can have it start right at as soon as the animation starts. Or you could have like a brief pause of like two seconds for the person to admire your animation before it starts pirouetting. All right. <laughs> Well, you can always you can always use the wizard again and create yeah. a new animation. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm, okay. So go finish. Okay, and then go um, calculate. That's how they did gravity. 
Okay, it's defying gravity. Is that cool? Well, this is how they did the movie Gravity, probably. Yeah, this is probably how they did the movie Gravity, yes. Okay, so now we're ready. To, we're going to go click on the animation wizard again. Okay, click on the animation wizard again, and this time we're going to explode it. So once again, you can only explode it if you already have an exploded view defined in your assembly, because it's basically going to use what you did for your exploded view. Okay, then go next. Notice it's going to start right where you left off at the 10 second mark. Do you see that? All right. And it's going to take 21 seconds. It calculates how long it's going to take based on the steps you have in your exploded view. And then go finish. Okay. And then go calculate. If you don't have an exploded view, it won't work. Error, it, it won't do anything because there's no there's nothing to explode. Okay. Okay, so there's my exploded view. Ready for the next step? Okay, let's click the animation wizard again. And this time, let's say collapse. Okay, and then go next. And notice it picks up right where you left off. And again, it's going to calculate the duration based on your steps. And then just go finish. And then go calculate. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and so let's finish up our animation with another pirouette. So let's go to the camera wizard. We're going to rotate the model. We'll say next. This time we'll rotate it around the Y axis. We'll say set the number of rotations to five. Let's say next. Notice it starts where it left off. Gives you 10 seconds, go finish. And then, now let's start for play from the start. So you can see your whole animation. Again? No, you don't have to, you just play it from the start. So is this really hard to do? <laughs> what do you think, Alex? It looks like I spent days doing it. Exactly. Run it. Mission accomplished. Smoke and mirrors. Let SolidWorks do all the work. The animation wizard is your new best friend. Sorry? Yeah. Okay, so we've completed our animation. Um, I want to walk you through how to save that file. Okay? Any animation you do, same steps. Okay? So notice once you've got an animation, this is no longer grayed out. Notice that? That's your save button. That's how you save or create your AVI file. It basically acts as a compiler, right? It's compiling all the little snapshots or frames for your kind of claymation deal. So you click on the save animation. It's going to ask you where you want to save it. Um, try not to save it. Try to save it on your flash drive. Notice it saves as an AVI file. Okay, you can set the size and the aspiration, and you can also just set it for a specific time range. That's what a lot of movie studios will do if they want to do like clips or outtakes or edits. 
for like games like Halo and stuff like that. Okay, so defaults are good. You want to save it as an ABI file because ABIs those play on Windows Media Player or uh, QuickTime. Um, you notice you have a choice. You could also do it as a series of bitmaps or TG, TGA files. You really want to keep it to an ABI. And just click Save. And then it gives you compressors. And you want to select Microsoft Video 1. The other guys, that's raw footage that the movie studios use. And unless you have a really good movie editing software, you're not going to be able to read the file output. So you want it to be Microsoft Video 1, always here, and you want to say OK. And then it's going to play again as it's creating your movie and saving it. OK? Your computer is what? Sorry? It said the Oh, then you'd have to do a recalculator. What do you mean fades or cuts? You mean like view changes? We're going to be doing these changes soon. <laughs> Does anybody else need help? Well, I'm sitting there. Don't let Ron be sitting too long. <laughs> Sorry, what was Oh, yeah, you could definitely edit, change things, adjust it, do whatever you want to do. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Insert different actions. Right, correct. Um, you can either move the keys around by changing the time or change the exploded view. Yeah. We're going to be doing that as one of the class, one of the left, one of the exercises. Oh, <laughs> 
That, that could be a graphics card video. Let me, let me, well, I'm going to play my video. My, so I'm going to come where I saved it. Locate where, locate it. Um, there it is. So here's the video that I just made, just now. And remember, you can take your animations, you can post them on Facebook or YouTube or Twitter and show them off to your friends and family and they'll think you're really awesome and that you spent hours and hours slaving, creating this animation that took you all of how, much, how long, uh, Alex? Uh, five minutes. <laughs> and they'll think that you're like, wow, we should pay more for your tuition at Laney College that you know how to do these things. It's pretty awesome. Yes, Kita. Can you what what? Um, I have had students, I have one student who did like an Iron Man comic for his project and he added like the theme from Iron Man. <laughs> or he added Black Sabbath, no he, did, he had black, added Black Sabbath as the soundtrack. Yeah, you could, do, you could do it with like Windows Movie Maker. We'll let you, um, if you have that software, um, and there's some free software you can download and will allow you to add music, sure. Absolutely. Hmm? Yeah, that's true, that's true. They want, uh, you'll get in trouble on YouTube if you try to post it. Yeah, questions? We're going to talk about how to change your views at the ne in the next exercise. Okay? So, we're going to close this up. Don't need to save it. Don't save it. Well, you can save it because you're on a laptop. Okay, we're going to open up the plunger hook assembly. So you need to locate the f folder called plunger hook and we're going to open up the plunger hook assembly. It kind of looks like a, one of those claws that you get for um, grabbing animals in, in arcades. You know, stuffed animals. Yeah, yeah. You've all seen those, right? It's rigged. It's rigged, I tell you. Yeah, I tried to tell that to my son. He never believes me. He still wants the bucks. <laughs> All right. So we want to be back in motion study. Is everybody here? Is there anybody lost needing help getting to this assembly? Okay, we're going to do a couple of things with this assembly. And I can already sense the excitement building in the room. <laughs> dum, da, dum, dum. What we're going to be doing? Okay, this plunger goes up and down. Okay, it's got a it's got a mate that slides this collar up and down. Um, if you click on the collar, um, actually, if you scroll down here to the mates, um, down here at the bottom, there's a distance mate. Do you see that distance mate at the very bottom? We're going to change the distance over time so that it's going from from all the way up to all the way down okay so it can go up and down so that's the first thing we're going to do with our script and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to be changing our views because i've had, already gotten a lot of questions from people can we change the view and how do we do that and how do we include a change of view in our movie right so now we're going to show you how to do that okay so what we want to do is we're going to place our cursor at the five second mark, okay? So put your cursor at the five second mark and click on distance, right click and go edit dimension. <coughs> and
and I want you to change the value to four inches. And then green check. Is everybody able to do that? If it's already in IPS, you can just yeah, that's, yeah. If you do, it's already in IPS. You just have to click on four. Everybody able to do that? Is there anybody lost needing help doing that? Okay. Then I want you to click on the ten second mark. Put your gray bar where the ten seconds is. There's going to be a little bit of a lag while it calculates where it's going. Okay, everybody there? And then I want you to click the distance and edit the dimension again and put it back to zero. So it's basically going to go up and down. Everybody got that? Anybody lost? Need a help? Okay, now click on calculate. Put your mouse back to the zero and hit run calculate to see how it moves. Is that cool? Okay. All right. All right. So now we want to put move our mouse back to the zero point. So everybody should have their gray bar back at zero. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be changing the camera view of our assembly at different time periods. Okay? So we're starting at the zero point. And the first thing we need to do is we need to see where right here where it says orientation and camera views. And it's got this red no symbol on it in the browser. Everybody see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we want to allow orientation in camera views. Okay, so if you right click, notice we, we want to click on uncheck disable view view uncheck disable view cre key creation and you'll notice now there's no longer a no symbol. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? Yeah. Okay, so um, then I want you to um, click on view orientation right here and set it to top view. See right here? So I'm at a top view at the zero second mark. Do you see that? I, I went to right click, go, went to view orientation and selected top view. And I want you to click on the five second mark. All right. And then I want you to right click on orientation and camera views, view orientation, and change it to a front view. Okay. And then I want you to go to the 10 second mark, go to orientation and camera view, view orientation and change it to a bottom view. Everybody got that? Okay, so now notice I want you to come over here. Do you see this little arrow with the, with the and right next down to it is a down arrow. Do you see that? Yeah. Next to the save button. Okay, that's the play mode playback mode. If you click down below, notice we can do playback mode normal, playback mode loop, and playback mode reciprocate. Okay, so let's change it to playback mode loop. What loop means it's going to start at the beginning and it's kind of get kind of go in a circle. And it'll keep going until you press the stop button. Okay? Ready? Okay, so I've got it in, in loop mode and then I'm going to press play. OK? 
it. Click the stop button. Change the playback mode to reciprocate. And click play. Do you see the difference between reciprocate and loop? What do you think? Sorry? Yeah. Okay. Now for our very last exercise, we are going to be on page 37. And we're going to travel along a path. Okay, so we're going to stop this one. I'm going to close it. I'm not going to save it. I want you to open up. Uh, da, da, da. See where it says camera track? Very first folder. And it's a part, this one's a part, it's called Track with Decals. Do y'all see it? You're going to open it up. <coughs> it's, it's, a, it's a part file and it's called Track with Decals. What's the parent file? Yeah. The folder? Yeah. Um, I think it's called Camera Track. It's the very first folder. Should look like this. If you need help finding it, Ron will help you. Miles needs help. I don't know. I just have a question. Oh, okay. Is that what? Uh, I think so. I think this is the. Um, that no, I think this is the square outside the Vatican. What St. Peter's? What is? What's it called? St. Peter's Square. I think it's called St. Peter's Square. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I've never been to Rome. I've been, I, I've been to Milan. Milan is great. All the stones in old Milan. Okay, so you want to go to motion study. And notice where you are at the 22nd mark. I'm on the 22nd mark. See where my gray bar is? You want to be on the zero mark, right? Okay. All right. Is everybody here? Okay. So it's basically what we're going to do is we're going to move along a path, kind of like through a maze. All right. All right. So we're going to put our cursor at 20. All right. You want to expand the lights, camera, and scene folder. And notice we have a camera right here. Everybody see it? And we're going to change the properties on the camera. In other words, we want to sit right now our camera's at the beginning and at the 22nd mark we want our camera to be at the end. Okay? So I want to right click on the camera and go properties. Everybody see that? Okay? And notice now it shows me, it splits into two windows, kind of like the other one. And it's showing me the camera, where the camera is. And do you see, I don't know if you can see, this blue line? This is the path for the camera, right here. Do you see that? See that blue line, squiggly line? That's the path for the camera. Okay? And notice this says target by selection, right here. All right, so um, that's the target point. The position, where we want the camera to be positioned. So we want, where do we want the target to be and where do we want the camera to be when we're at the 22nd mark? So on the 22nd mark, we want to be over here and we want the camera. To be around here. <coughs> you 
We want it to be like at 99. And 99. If you have it at 100, he's, um, okay. So we want to, oh, I'm sorry. We want him to be, on the target position, we want him to be 100. And at the ca camera position, we want him to be at 99. Okay? And then we want to click on the green check. And notice you can see, you see this is at the very end, you see the stop sign? Okay? Click on the green check. Okay? And then notice you've got a key point. Do you see that? See the big green, big green key point that goes with the camera? Got it? See it? All right. Play the green play button and see what your animation looks like. Oh, I'm going backwards. No! I should have started at zero. <laughs> okay. Uh, oops, I'm at playback loop. Okay. I'm going to go back to playback mode normal. I'm going to start at the zero. I'm going to hit the green button. And here's my movie. <coughs> Stefan, look at the screen. Is that cool? Okay, so that is it for how to do an animation. Hold on to these. You'll need them for your own animation unless you've already, like Alex, decided to just go with the camera wizard, right? Camera wizard. Camera wizard, yay! Okay, so most students say this is their favorite.